We will have the dreams and we plan to make it happen, but we need your help. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. The next item on your agenda is the public hearing regarding proposed rates and exemptions to the newly established municipal drainage. Billion dollar business. 
Um, could you please uh, uh, wrap up? I just need to move on. So okay, just a minute. Thank you. <laughs> a minute. Churches are billion-dollar businesses. I thank you all for your time and your consideration, but I can promise you, you will not get the votes out of the churches. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Harris, thank you for coming down, and thank you for being a civic leader for a very long time. We've all worked with you down here, and we appreciate it. <laughs> okay, the next speaker is Clyde Bryan, excuse me, Nathaniel Stitch. To be followed by Connie Etchen. Good morning, Mayor, members of the Council. My name is uh, Clyde Bryan. Um, I brought with me this morning a, uh, a contract from uh, uh, Costello Inc. Uh, and uh, they're distributing that now. And, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand the timeline of this, this contract and how it relates to uh, Council Member uh, Costello's appointment uh, to the chair of the Drainage Committee. Uh, this contract was uh, evidently executed in October of, um, of 2009, and that was, that was uh, prior to Council Member Costello's uh, election. Uh, I would like to point out that this was when I was in private practice. But, but, uh, but he did receive the contract. It's $1.7 million. Uh, he was then uh, appointed to the chair of the Drainage Committee, and uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, Mayor, uh, was that appointment made by you or by the, uh, the, uh, the... By me. Uh, okay, uh, were, were the other members of council, or, uh, members of council aware that you, at, at the time of the appointment, that, that he had a $1.7 million contract? Since it was my appointment, uh, I didn't ask them, but I was not aware of it. Well, well, I, I know you as, uh, as as controller. You you probably signed millions of, I mean, hundreds of contracts, that, thousands probably. But it did it did pass through your office as evidenced on uh, as evidenced on page two of the uh, the handout. Again, you signed many of them, so you probably could not have been aware of it. But the point still stands. Uh, he signed a one point seven million dollar contract for the, in, for the infrastructure appoint, improvements. Uh, he, he was appointed to the chair of the drainage committee. Uh, he was instrumental in the charter amendment action that the city went with on Prop 1, and I, I, I just I want to throw this, this, uh, this out to some of the other uh, council members. Uh, council Member Radford, did you uh, have uh, knowledge of this? Mayor? Mr. Feldman. The purpose of this uh, public hearing is to discuss uh, r rates and exemptions. You know, this, there is an active OIG investigation going on. This uh, is, is there not? Uh, in fact, it's uh, as mayor. It's it's being uh, completed, and a report will be under desk today. I would ask that uh, we not engage further in this discussion until the OIG report is present to council. Uh, Chief, I've made a request, a public information request, uh, for all the, the contracts and the purchase orders of all sitting council members, and that was done over three weeks ago, and I'm still waiting for that. And I don't think, I don't think uh, the the council should vote on this until we have that information, and because we we need to know if there's a conflict of interest here. Have you received any response at all? Well, uh, Chief, that, that uh, they, they, they sent me an email that said that they were checking into it, but I also wanted to point out that David Welsh, through his secretary, Stephanie, made another request, so it was over three weeks ago. And then that was over three weeks ago, excuse me. Uh, who responded to you about the, uh, TPI, the TPIA request? Who did you submit it to, and who responded to you? Do you know? Uh, it, it was someone, it was someone, I can't remember her name, but I can send you the email. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Connie Etcher. <clears throat> um, I'm Steve Ruggle, and I'm, I'm not sure, I want to admit that I'm pastor of Grace Community Church after what I hear of here. Um, <clears throat> we as a church are opposed on principle in terms of we view this as a tax, and a tax against the church, and an open door <clears throat> to things 
that have not taken place before in our culture as a nation. And so I want to go on record as saying that another point I want to make is that when you ask the people to vote on something, do they clearly understand what they're voting on? I just saw a video um, of Councilman Castillo in the last public hearing, um, and my judgment rebuking one of the speakers and saying that he was insulted that the people, that the idea would be brought that people didn't understand. Well, I just read it. Sitting right here, sitting right back there, and I've gone to college, and I'm 60 years old, and I'm a pastor of a church with thousands of people, and frankly, if what's happening now that's proposed is what that said, I didn't get it. Council Member Bradford. Why, thank you, Mayor. Pastor, Please speak uh, to the mic. Um, um, thanks for coming down and for your supporters as well. You know some previous speakers have had said some things that uh, uh, reasonable minds uh, could differ. But we know at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, that we don't differ when it comes to one aim, one destiny, okay? I think we can connect on that. Pastor, I, I think I want to say thanks for your comments because uh, when we talk about a drainage fee or a tax or whatever you want to call it, openness and real transparency is important. You and the thousands of people that attend your congregation, you pay a fee through your, your residencies, through your homes where you live. You pay that fee now because you choose to worship, because you choose to praise and uplift God. Why should you pay twice? And someone who does not choose to worship any place, they don't pay that second time around. That's just wrong in my view. Thank you. Council Member Noriega, there's three more in the queue. Don't go away. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted a chance to say thank you to you. Um, I, I've been very blessed in your church at funerals for our first responders. And I, I'm the daughter of pastors, and the granddaughter and the great-granddaughter of pastors. And I know a lot goes into putting uh, those kind of services on, so I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Hoyne. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Pastor, for coming down here. I just wanted to echo my concurrence with Council Member Bradford. I know, as you just said, that if we are going to compose the fee on your church, on the church, the church will have to cut some of the activities. Some of that programs, like after-school programs and uh, uh, junior programs, and uh, crime will rise, and it will cost the city more. So I concur with Council Member Bradford. And I'll do within my my duty and my power to make sure that uh, churches are going to be exempt. I think what's important for everyone here is that whatever final resolution is, that we get to where we remove the clouds. There's definitely a cloud that exists. The cloud affects all of you and affects our city because we want the issue before us, agree or disagree to be resolved in a way that everything was done properly and right. Pastor, uh, Pastor, I think it's uh, time. my turn to talk. Uh, uh, Pastor, okay, it's uh, Mayor Parker. Uh, I'm Council Member Costello. Um, uh, I think it's uh, interesting how uh, my reputation has now become political fodder father for people who don't want to discuss the merits of this program. It's not a debate about Steve Costello or Costello Inc. This is a debate about the long-term future of our city. Uh, as an engineer, when I campaigned in 2009, I campaigned on a long-term source of solutions for streets and drainage. I was also interviewed by a number of local stations and radio stations questioning my firm, and I told them, we are going to have contracts with the city. Less than 2% of my business was in the city of over a 20-year period. Uh, I will not do any work of the city as a council, uh, city council member. Um, and, and when it comes to the churches, this is my view. You pay for utilities. Drainage is a utility. You pay for water, you pay for the sewer, you pay for your electricity. Uh, you, you, you should also pay for your drainage services. Why, for years I've advocated for everyone to contribute to this program. 
uh, and, and as relative to the contract, uh, relative to my uh, conflict of interest, I don't have a conflict of interest. I am going to, uh, am I going to abstain from voting? No, I'm not. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to advocate for this program. Uh, and Pastor, I do appreciate everything that Grace has done for our community, and I know you will continue to do that. And uh, whatever this program of yours comes out in the long run, I, I think we will all benefit in the future. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, well, with all due respect, I think we can disagree agreeably. And um, I certainly respect your opinion. I disagree with that. I think it is a tax. I think it is, um, it is the opening of, it is the cracking, the door open to the tax to tax the church. Thank you. Councilmember Noriega. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, one of the things we talk about is, you know, how do you walk that line? Because everyone works for somebody. You know, do lawyers vote on laws? Yes, they do. And, and I have found my colleagues' expertise helpful. And when I had the opportunity to talk to a group of engineers, they told me that they weren't concerned about the future. They said they were really scared that we were all going to be underwater in no time. And their expertise combined with their real concern got my attention. I think there's a real belief on their part that this is a desperate situation and not just a, a money issue or a tax issue. That we have a very serious, serious um, concern here. And I listen to them because they know what they're talking about. Again, I don't question that. That's not my question. I think my question is um, that this is the people's house. And if it's the people's house, the people ought to know exactly what they agree to. And if they agree to it, fine. But I think that that's my only issue. I understand that there is an answer to Mr. Bryan's request, the TPI A re request. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. The, the record shows that a request was made by uh, one Stephanie Welch for all contracts that Costello League had with the city of Houston. The record also shows that those documents were timely provided uh, in CD form uh, approximately three and a half weeks ago. That's what I have to report, Mayor. I'm glad to know that we did respond to the TPA, TPIA request and through the controller's office. This concludes our public agenda, and we are now on to open agenda items for the open agenda. Everyone who signed up has three minutes. Thank you. Our next speaker is Josh Davis, speaking on 
audience participation in a live performance. I am the new mayor. This is not me saying this. We'll be around in a minute to pick up the cards. Excuse me, excuse me. We want to get on with me. Can we start the meeting so we can hear the speakers that have signed up? So, Madam City Clerk, if you can call the speakers. As I call your name, please come to the podium in any order and state your name for the record. Those of you who are standing in the back of the room, can you leave and shut the door, please? Thank you. So we can hear the public speakers. As I call your name, please come to the podium in any order and state your name for the record. Again, we understand that some people may be coming from different areas outside. 
So we'll allow time for that. Our first three speakers are Gail Orr, Ronnie Yates, and Jennifer Gardner. Gail Orr, Ronnie Yates, Jennifer Gardner.
in the last two weeks while taking no time to lift up the things that were wonderful about the march, where were the pictures of the baby brigades? Where were the pictures of the community and the families that got started at 8 o'clock in the morning and went till dusk? Where were those pictures? Where are the pictures of the families that are foreclosed by the banks that you took so much of your city, so much of your PowerPoint to show us? Where are the pictures, lastly, of you all, many of you who know and need to get on the correct side of all of this? Many of you were out there yesterday. Where were your pictures standing with us? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start off with a, my name is Max Alstead. I just got out of jail a couple of hours ago. I'm going to start off with a slight tangent and ask Mayor Kwan uh, and the city administrator Santana to immediately contact the police department to return all the necessary belongings. They're still being held. There was a bit of a snafu in terms of moving personal effects that were confiscated. There were people without their house keys on one of them. There were people without their wallets and cell phones on among them. I would like you to get somebody down at OPE to immediately take action on that. Now on to the actual topic at hand. I can support maintaining a dialogue with Occupy, and I can support maintaining a dialogue that keeps it safe. What I cannot support is the idea that we can use conversation to deal with the violence that we saw last night. There were people there, there were people there waving claw hammers at people who tried to put out fires. There were people there who caused serious, serious damage, and there are people there among the movement who are saying that vandalism is not violence, and those people are wrong. People who vandalize our city, those people ought to be prosecuted because those people are preventing what any reasonable and right-minded people from exercising their free speech by endangering us, by potentially provoking serious police action. You cannot have a conversation about a giant fire in the street. It's not possible, but the people who started need to be held accountable. Thank you. Salzman, uh, Carla, could you please read item 396? And uh, as the audience knows, we're not allowed audible demonstrations, so if you must, if you must, you, uh, you could just uh, wave your hands and support what somebody says, that, that would be appropriate. Item 396 is, is uh, Sheila Harden uh, testifying the illegal testing on citizens. Sheila Harden? Ms. Harden. Does anyone have a piece of paper with the name Sheila Harden written on it? Testing the illegal testing of citizens? Uh, apparently she's not here today. Item 397. We have Mr. P. Colt who wants to thank the city civil servants. Here, here comes Mr. Colt. Uh, Mr. Colt, it's always a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, you, you know the rules, but for the record, uh, please state your name and uh, you have two minutes. Thank you. My name is Pete Colt. Uh, it's good to see you up there, Commissioner Fish. And Commissioner Salzman, I want to apologize to you because I lost faith in you. But when you were running the Parks Department and you were worried about the dogs infesting the park on 11th and 19th and the feces, you said something that struck a chord with me and made me say, oh my God, he really is who he says he is. And I'm going to go to the people I talk to and I'm going to say I was wrong. Commissioner Salzman does care about our kids. And you're right. We care more about our puppies and ponies than we do our kids. So thank you. I'm sorry. Now, I'm here to talk to you today because I live in the kids' zone. Kid Zone is everything within a quarter mile walk of the Northwest Cultural District, and that includes Con Edison Park on the river there. The Kid Zone is a zone where infants, toddlers, and youth come to play, work, learn, entertain, entertain, and live. I'd like to invite Mr. Paulson to come and, and move in. Shirley Riley is selling her home, and I'd like him to move in. It's an historic home. For a neighbor, he'd have little Carson, three years old. The reason he wouldn't want to move in is this, and I'm sorry to say. These 
are from the McDonald's on 18th, the Episcopal Learning Center, the Catholic Girls' School across from the Children's Symphonic Choir. Those of you who are here from the neighborhood know that I pick up this stuff every day. I do not clean up the vomit on Thursday, Thursdays. I draw the line at bodily fluids. You're about in time. Thank you. The rector at Trinity Seminary and I agree. It is very tiring to pick up used condoms. <laughs> Mr. Cole, your time is up, but I have a more fundamental concern. What you just put on that table is actually just considered hazardous material. And I don't know what you put there, what drugs are involved, but we now have a public health issue. Thank you for agreeing with me. Thank you for making my point better than I could. Thank you for stating exactly what this is. The question now is, what are we going to do to help our kids? You know, the secretary just reminded me that we have other people come up here to testify on that chair. So I, I think we're going to have to take a recess until we can get someone to come up here with some alcohol, Clorox, and it was, it was really unfair to have another. Uh, we, we appreciate your passion, but this was not at all well thought out. We're going to take a recess for about 10 minutes. We're really going to need everyone to clear the room so that we can disinfect. That's it, folks. We're, we're going to take a 10-minute recess. Please clear the room now, everyone. Thank you.
keyboard player, please test that mic. Keyboard player, please test the mic. Mic check, check, one, two, thank you.
If there's a bustle in your head, Rob, don't be alarmed now. It's just a sprinkling by the rain queen. I think that all plumbing problems should be paid for by the city. A gunner. I love my teacher. I'm sitting next to Morgan. I like English. I resolve to have a point. I think we should have more sports choices. When I was in private practice, I had a rule. The rule is that when you hear from someone who doesn't like what you are doing, you give it a day. You get an email. What the hell do you think you're doing? You wait a day. You can't respond without reacting too strongly. In politics, you can't do that. Everything is right away. Even if we can't do anything, we have to hear you. You make your complaint. Maybe we don't want to help you, but maybe we can ignore you a little less the next time. I do civil engineering. This is mostly the stuff that goes on underground. A developer buys some land, let's say. They want to know how many houses or buildings they can put on it. So we figure out how to get water in, sewer in, and then in addition to that, the electricity, cable, and phone. And then we build on it, and they sell off the land in plots. Engineers have a habit of questioning faith. We see things in black and white. You do this, you don't do that. But now I'm on council, and this is a performance. And everything is in shades of gray. The city we make is invisible. It's what's underneath everything we do. On the street, in their homes, people live their lives. Point A to point B, just get me there. Work, school, home, a date, a movie, a restaurant. Every city has a life force underneath its life. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. in this city, where very rich men delegated power in secret hotel rooms. It used to be a common good that was only discussed in shadows. And then later, there were new titans, the businessmen who built companies out of thin air. They didn't really exist. You had your Ken Lays, the Enrons, who had a whole lot of influence. And when those guys were disgraced, or at least some of them, you had a vacuum. At a certain point, four of us got together for lunch and said, we got to do something. The infrastructure is old. It's over capacity. It was built in the 40s for a lot fewer people. We never thought the footprint of the city would be so big. We talked a lot. We became seven guys. We made subcommittees. And then we said that we had to get somebody on council who can represent the plan. 
so that we could do it right. And we looked around, a group of engineers, and it was like, who's the only one who has enough personality? <laughs> Maybe the bar was set a little low. Some of the guys I work with think we should have done something different. They don't like the way things are playing out. I like to remind them that it's not all about them. It's hard to listen when you know what's right. The right thing according to you, which because you're an engineer is probably the right thing, may not be the thing that gets enough people to say yes, because this is the people's house. Are you trying to solve a problem or make it go away? Because those are two very different things. I don't need this. Meaning that if people don't want me here, I can go back to my old job, ripping up streets, putting in pipes, making paperwork, running. I run like crazy. I run like hell. Nothing slows me down. I just make a new road. hear about running a dog to death? You can get a golden retriever to play fetch with you until it drops dead. You can do that because that dog loves you so much. You can get your own body to do that too. I had started running already, but not a lot. And then one day, I saw these people go by with a number on them, running. And I asked somebody, what's that? And they said, that's the Houston Marathon. And I said, what's that? I didn't know what a marathon was. And so I went and bought a book about it. And I thought, I can do that. And I did. Doing a triathlon is really a powerful mind-body experience. 
The race itself is actually an anti-climatic event. You've trained for the race, so it's not about whether your body can do it or not. You know you can. It's about telling yourself to keep going. Honestly, I run so I can eat. I love food. I used to just eat one meal a day. I'd wake up with coffee and a cigarette and wouldn't eat until dinner. Now I eat five times a day. Who else here has seen something that you didn't know and then done? Is salvation a quick and easy process? Neither is government. The soul is complicated. The city is complicated. There are so many directions people want to go in, and we can't all agree. We can't. I believe in a higher order. I just don't know what it is. I wish I knew how to sing like that. I wish I could map faith with my voice. It's so beautiful. The invisible city above the city we live in. Victory is mine.